hey, hello. Hope everyone's having a good day. I'm one of the order, 2nd of September 2020. I'm in the process of writing a comprehensive summary of... It'll provide an introduction to exactly what the own is, its origin, and its main attributes. Metaphysical or religious, political, economical, and technological. There are some good resources on funny subject floating around on the internet. Many are dated, scattered, or don't paint a full picture. So my aim is to consolidate everything into one or two articles that lay everything out as plainly as possible. Anyway, and the article below it was originally published on a Catholic Patriot website named Michael is a relatively comprehensible timeline of history of the own starting at the beginning of the own it is misses some important context such as Sebastian Frankenstein but other than that it is a great summary featuring most of the important figures and events my article will be yeah okay but this article is worth sharing reserving I'm sure somebody will find it useful I'm copying it word for word quoting below the line history of own part one 1773 Mayor M. Shell Rothschild Mayor M. Shell Rothschild assembles 12 of his most influential friends and convinces them that if they all pull their resources together they can rule the world. This meeting takes place in Frankfurt, Germany. Rothschild also informs his friends that he has found the perfect candidate, an individual incredible intellect and ingenuity and to lead the organization he has planned, Adam Weishaupt. 1st of May, 1776, Adam Weishaupt. Adam Weishaupt, codenamed Spartacus, establishes a secret society called the Order of the... Weishaupt is a professor of canon law at the University of Inscot in Bavaria, part of Germany. The Illuminati seeks to establish the own. Their objectives are as follows. The... 1. Abolition of all ordered governments. 2. Abolition of private property. 3. Abolition of inheritance. 4. Abolition of patriotism. 5. Abolition of family. 6. Abolition of religion. 7. Creating of world government. July 1782. The Order of the... The Order of the... Joins the forces with the at the Congress of Wilson Bad, the Comte de Ver, Ray, an attendee at the conference, comes away visibly shaken. When questioned about the tragic secrets he brought back with him, he replies, I will not confide them to you. I can only tell you that this is all very much more serious than you think. From this time on, according to his biographer, the Comte de Vreux could only speak of Freemasonry with horror. The insignia of the Order of the first appeared on the reverse side of the US $1 bills in 1993. One can read at the base of the 13-story pyramid in the year of 1776 MDCCLXVI in Roman numerals. The I radiating in all directions is the all-spying eye that realized the Gestapo-like agency set up by Weisenhaupt. In Latin words, in a copious means, our enterprise conspiracy has been crowned with success below Novus Ordum Sanctum, explains the nature of the enterprise, a new social order, or a new world order. 1785, detailed plan of the French Revolution found. A courier named Lanes is struck by lightning and killed while travelling by horseback through the town of Rabspin. While the Bavarian officials examine the contents of his saddlebags, they discover the existence of the Order of the and find plans detailing the coming French Revolution. The Bavarian government attempts to alert the government of France of impending disaster, but the French government fails to hear this warning. Bavarian officials arrest all members of them. They can find, but why is Hupp and the others have gone underground and cannot be found? 1796 becomes a major issue in the presidential election in the United States. John Adam wins the election by opposing Masonry, his sons, John Quincy Adams, warns the dire threat to the nation posed by the Masonic lodges. They do conscientiously and sincerely believe that the order of the Masonry, not the greatest, is one of the greatest moral and political evils under which the Union is now labouring. 1797, John Robson. John Robson, Professor of National History at Edinburgh University, Scotland, publishes a book entitled Proofs of a Conspiracy in which he reveals that Adam Weishaupt had attempted to recruit him. He exposes the diabolical aims of the to the world. George W. F. Heigel, 1821. George W. F. Heigel formulates what is called the Heigelian dialect by the process which limited objectives are achieved according to the Heigelian dialectic. Thesis put a thesis equals synthesis. In other words, the first you form at a crisis, then you, then there is enormous public outcry that something must be done about the problem. There you offer a solution that brings about changes you really wanted all along, but which people would have been unwillingly to accept initially. 1828, Mayor M. Shell Rothschild. Mayor M. Shell Rothschild, who finances the, expresses his utter contempt for the national governments which attempt to regulate international bankers such as him. Allow me to issue and control the money of a nation. I care not who writes the laws. 1848, Moses Mulcahy, Marx, Levy. The hand and the jacket is a Freemason high up symbol. Karl Marx writes, Communist Mesfesto. Marx is a member of the Liberty Front organization called the League of Just. He not only advocates economic and political changes, he advocates moral and spiritual changes as well. He believes the family should be abolished and that all children should be raised by essential authority. He expressed his attitude toward God by saying, We must war against the prevailing ideas of religion, the state of country, of patriotism. The idea of God is the keynote of a perverted civilization. It must be destroyed. January 22, 1878, Albert Pike. In his letter, Italian revolutionary leader Gustavo 
Mussolini, Albert Parks, Sovereign Grand Commander of the Southern Jurisdiction of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, announces the establishment of a secret society within a secret society. We must create a super right to remain unknown, to which we will call those Masons of a higher degree, of whom we shall select it. With regard to our brothers in Masonry, these men must pledge be pledges to the strictest society, strictest secrecy. Through his supreme right, we will govern all Freemasonry, which will become the one international centre, more powerful because its direction will be unknown. This ultra secret organisation is called the New and Reformed Palladium. And right. This is why about 95% of the men involved in masonry don't have a clue as to what the objectives of the organisation actually are. They are under the delusion that it's just fine community organisations doing good work. 1875, Helen Petrova Blasky, Russian occultist, Selena Blasky founds the Theological Society. Madame Blasky claims that Tibetan holy men in the Himalayas, who she refers to as masters of wisdom, communicated with her in London by telepathy. She insists that Christians have it backwards and that Satan is good and God is evil. She writes that Christians and scientists must be made to represent their Indian betters. The wisdom of India, her philosophy and the achievement must be made known in Europe and America. 1884, the Fabian Society. The Fabian Society is founded in Great Britain to promote socialism. The Fabian Society takes its name from the Roman general Fabius Maximus. He fought Hannibal's army in the small deliberating skirmishes, but rather in attempting one delusion battle. Uh, wasn't it the Fabians in um, that uh, book and that play, Oliver, that British one? July 14, 1889, Albert Pike rejects, uh, reveals who the true object of Masonic worship. Albert Pike issues instructions to the 23rd three Supreme Councils of the World on the 14th July 1889. He reveals who is the true object of the Masonic worship. To you, Sovereign Grand Instructor General, we say this, that you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd and 31st and 30th. Masonic's religion shall be, by all of us, initiates of the highest degrees maintaining the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. 1890 to 1896, Cecil Rhodes. Cecil Rhodes, an enthusiastic student of John Ruskin, is the Prime Minister of South Africa, a British colonial at the time. He is able to exploit and control gold and diamond wealth of South Africa. He works to bring all the habitable portions of the world under the dominion of ruling elite. To that end, he uses a portion of his vast wealth to establish the famous Rhodes Scholarships. And we've had a lot of um, Australian Prime Ministers and Members of Parliament's Rhodes Scholars. 1893, Parliament of the World Religions held in Chicago. The Theological Society sponsors of a Parliament of World Religions held in Chicago. The purpose of the Commission is to introduced Hindu and Buddhist concepts such as belief in reincarnation to the West. 1911, the Socialist Party of Great Britain publishes Socialism in Religion. The Socialist Party of Great Britain publishes a pamphlet entitled Socialism in Religion in which they clearly state their position on Christianity. It is therefore a profound truth that socialism is a natural enemy of religion. Christian socialism is in fact an anti-socialist. Christianity is the antithesis, antithesis of socialism. Sorry for saying that wrong. 1912, Colonel Edward Mendel House. Colonel Edward Mendel House, a closed advisor to President Woodrow Wilson, publishes Philip Drew's Administrator, in which he promotes socialism as a dream of, by Karl Marx. February 3, 1913, the 16th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, uh, making it possible for the federal government to impose progressive income taxes ratified. Plank 2 of the Communist Manifesto had called for the progressive income tax in Canada. The income tax was introduced in 1917 as a temporary measure to finance the war effort. 1913, President Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson would present Woodrow Wilson publishes The New Freedom in which he reveals, Since I entered politics, politics I have chiefly had some men's views confided me to me in privately. Some of the biggest men in the US in the field of commerce and manufacturing are afraid of somebody, are afraid of something. They know that there is a power somewhere so organised, so, so stubble, so watchful, so interlocked, so complete, so pervasive, that they had better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. 23rd of December 1913, the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, neither Federal nor Reserve, is a privately owned institution is created. It is planned in a secret meeting in 1910 on Jekyll Island in Georgia by a group of blankers and politicians including Colonel Hoss. This transfers the power to create money from the American government to private group of bankers. The Federal Reserve Act is hastily passed just before Christmas break. Congressman Charles A. Lindenberg Sr., the father of a famous avatar, warns this act established the most gigantic trust on the earth. When the President signs this act, the invisible government by the money power proven to exist by the money trust investigation will be legalized. 1916, President Woodrow Wilson observes, three years after signing the Federal Reserve Act into law, President Woodrow Wilson observes, I am the most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is controlled by its system of credit. Our system of credit is concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. We have come to be the most 
one of the most worst ruled, one of the most completely controlled, dominated governments in a civilised world. No Long, longer by a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and the voter majority, but a government by the opinion and duress of a small group of dominant men. 1917. V.I. Lenin. With the aid of finances from New York City and London, V.I. Lenin was able to overthrow the government of Russia. Lenin later comments on the apparent con contradiction of the links between prominent capitalists and communists. There also exists another alliance. At first glance, a strange one, a surprising one, but if you think about it, in fact, one which is well grounded and easy to understand. There is alliance between our communist leaders and your capitalists. Remember the Hegelian dialectic? 30th of May 1990, the Royal Institute on International Affairs, Chatham House. Prominent British and American personalities established the Royal Institute for National Affairs in England, Institute of National Affairs in the US, at the meeting arranged by Colonel House, attended by various favoured societies, including noted economist John Maynard Keynes. 1920, Winston Churchill, Britain's Winston Churchill recognizes the connection between the Illuminati and the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. He observes, from the days of Spartacus Weishaupt to those of Karl Marx to those of Trotsky, Barbara, Bella Khan, Rosa Luxemburg and Emma Goldman, this worldwide conspiracy for the overthrow of the civilization and the reconstitution of society on the basis of arrested development of a navious male of loathing and impossible equality has been steadily growing. It played a definitely recognisable role in the tragedy of the French Revolution has been the mainspring of every subversive movement during the late 19th century and is now at this band of extraordinary personalities from the underworld of the great cities of Europe and America have gripped their Russian people by their hair of their heads and have become practically the undisputed masters of that enormous empire. 1920 to 31, Louis T. McFadden. Louis T. McFadden is the chairman of the House of Committee on Banking and Currency concerning the Federal Reserve. Congressman McFadden notes that when the Federal Reserve Act was passed, the people of the United States did not perceive a, a world banking system was being set up here. The super state controlled by international bankers and international industrial acting together to enslave the world for their own pleasure. Every effort has been made by the Fed to conceal its powers, but the truth is, the Fed has upset the government, it controls everything here, it controls all our foreign relations, it makes and breaks our governments at will. Setting the Great Depression and the country's acceptance of the FDR's New Deal, he asserts, it was no accident, it was carefully contrived occurrence. The international bankers sought to bring about a condition of despair here, so they might emerge as the rulers of us all. 1921, the Council of Foreign Relations, CFR. Colonel House recognises the American branch of the International Institute of International Affairs on the Council of Foreign Relations for the past 60 years. 80% of the top positions in every administration, whether Democrat or Republican, have been occupied by members of this organisation. The Council of Foreign Affairs endorses world governments in its magazine. Foreign Affairs author Philip Kerr states, from empire to commonwealth, obviously there is going to be no peace nor prosperity for mankind as long as the earth remains divided into 50 or 60 independent states. Until some kind of international system is created, the real problem today is that of world government. History of the Part 2 1928, The Open Conspiracy Blueprints for World Revolution by H.G. Wells. H.G. Wells published a former Fabian Socialist. Wells writes, The political world of the open conspiracy must weaken, efface, incorporate and subsede, uh, and supersede existing governments. The open conspiracy is the natural inheritor of the socialist communist enthusiasm. It may be in control of Moscow before it is in control of New York. The character of the open conspiracy will now be plainly displayed. It will be a world religion. I think Scientology will be the next world religion. The Shape of Things to Come by H.G. Wells in 1933. Uh, Wells predicts the Second World War around 1940, originating from a German-Polish dispute. After 1945, there would be an increasing lack of public safety in criminally infected areas. The plan for the modern world world state would succeed on its third attempt to come out of something that occurred in Basra, Iraq. The book also states, although world governments had been plainly coming for some years, although it had been endlessly feared and murmured against, it found no opposition anywhere. 21st of November 33, Franklin Roosevelt. In a letter to Colonel Edwards House, Franklin Roosevelt writes, the real truth of the matter is, as you and I know, that a financial element in the larger centres has owned the government since the days of Andrew Jackson. March 1942, the Federal Council of Churches an article in Time magazine chronicles the Federal Council of Churches, with, which later becomes the National Council of Churches, as part of the World Council of Churches, leading its weight to efforts to establish a global authority. A meeting of the top officials of the council comes out in favour of a 1. A world government of delegate powers, 2. Strong immediate limitations on national sovereignty, 3. International control of all armies and navies, representing representatives, some 335 of them, of some 30 some denominations assert that a new order of economic life has 
imminent and imperative. A new order that is sure to come either through voluntary cooperation within the framework of democracy or through explosive revolution. And I think that's what's happened with Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Saddam and all them. Um, I think that, you know, that they, the one world group wanted them to be part of, you know, and they didn't want to be a part of it. So they've gone in and done all this. And I think uh, North Korea has been closed off uh, to serve as, you know, the boogeyman at the end. 28th of June, 45, Harry Truman, President Harry Truman, endorses world government and speech. It will be just as easy for nations to get along in the public of the world as it is for us to get along in the Republic of the United States. 24th of October, 45, the United Nations Charter. The United Nations Charter becomes effective. Also, October 24th, Senator Glenn Taylor, Idaho, introduces Senate Resolution 183 calling upon the U.S. Senate to go on record as favoring creation of world republic, including the an international police force. Feb 7, 1950, James Warburg, international financer and CFR member James Warburg, tells the Senate Foreign Relations Subcommittee, we shall have a world government whether or not you lack it by conquest or consent. February 9th, 1950, Resolution 66, Senate Foreign Relations Subcommittee introduces Senate Concurrent Resolution 66, which begins as, whereas, in order to achieve universal peace and justice, the present Charter of the United Nations should be changed to provide a true world of government constitution. 1952, World Association of Parliaments for World Government. The World Association of Parliaments for World Government draws up a map designed to illustrate how foreign troops would occupy and police the six regions into which the United States and Canada will be divided as part of their world government plan. Read. 1954, Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands established the Bilderbergs. Prince Bernhard, sorry, Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands establishes Bilderbergs International Politics and Bankers who meet secretly on an annual basis. 1961, the U.S. State Department issues documents 7277. State Department issues 7277 entitled Freedom for, from War, the U.S. Program for General and Complete Disarmament in the world, peaceful world. It details a three-stage plan to disarm all nations and to arm UN with the final stage in which no state would have the military power to challenge or to progressively strengthen UN peace war. 1966, Tragedy and Hope by Carol Quigley. Professor Carol Quigley, Bill Clinton's mentor at Georgetown University, authors a massive volume entitled Tragedy and Hope in which he states, there does exist and has existed for a generation an international network which operates to some extent in the way the radical right believes the Communists act. In fact, this network which we may identify as the round table groups, has no aversion to cooperating with the communists or any other groups and frequently does so. I know the, of the operations of the network because I've studied it for 20 years and was permitted for two years in the early 1960s to examine its papers and secret records. I have no aversion to it or most of its aims and have for much of my life been close to it and many of its instruments. I have objected both in past and recently to a few of its policies, but in general, my chief difference of the opinion is that it wishes to remain unknown, and I believe its role in history is significant enough to be known. 1972, Chester M. Pierce. His keynotes to address the Association for Childhood Education International, Chester M. Pierce, Professor of Education at Psychiatry in the Facility of Medicine at Harvard University, proclaims every child in America entering school at the age of five is insane because he comes to school with certain allegiances towards our founding fathers, towards his parents, towards a belief of a supernatural being. It's up to you teachers to make all of these sick children well by creating an international child of the future. July 1973, the Trilateral Commission, international banker and staunch member of the Subversive Co Council of Foreign Relations, David Rockefeller, has a new organization called the Trilateral Commission, of which the official aim is to harmonize the political, economic, social and cultural relations between three major economic regions in the world. Hence the name Trilateral. He invites future President Jimmy Carter to become one of the founding members. Zygmunt Bilaraski is the organization's first director. Sorry, I can't say it. <laughs> the Trilateral Commission. There are three major economic areas in the world, Europe, North America, and the Far East, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, etc. If under a pretext of having to join forces to be able to face economic competition with the two other economic regions, the member countries of each of these three regions decide to merge into one single country, forming three super states, then the one world government will almost be achieved. Like Fabian societies, they achieved their ultimate goal via one world government step by step. The same is to almost achieved in Europe with the single European Act and the Masharit Treaty, which was implemented in 1993 regarding all, requiring all the member countries of the European community to abolish their trade barriers and to hand over their monetary and fiscal policies of the Trich technocrats of the European Commission in Bra Brussels, Belgium. In January 2002, all these European countries abandoned their national currencies to share only one common currency, the euro. Moreover, the Nice Treaty removed powers from countries to give them 
over to the European Commission. What began innocently in 1952 as the European Economic Community, common authority to regulate coal and steel industry among the European nations, finally turned into a European superstate. Jean Monnet, a French socialist economic and founder of the EEC, had this in mind when he said, political union in inevitably follows econ economic union. He also stated in 1948, the creation of the United Europe must be regarded as the essential step towards the creation of the United World. As regards to the North American area, the merger of its member countries is well underway with the passage of free trade between Canada, USA and then Mexico. The next few years, the free trade agreement is supposed to include all, uh, all of those South Central America, the single currency for all of them. Mexico's President Fox said on May 6, 2002 in Madrid, eventually our long-range objective is to establish with the United States but also with Canada and our regional partner an ensemble of connections and institutes similar to those created by the European Union. 1973, the world divided into 10 kingdoms. The Club of Rome, a UN operative, issues a report entitled Regionalization, Regionalized and Adaptive Model of the Global World System. This report divides the entire world into 10 kingdoms. The report is missing off the original website. In this 74 prototype, the Club of Rome has divided the world in 10 regions which will all be replaced with all national boundaries when the new world order is implemented. See Revelation 17, 12, 14. 79. FEMA. FEMA, which stands for Federal Emergency Management Agency, is given huge powers. It has the power in case of national emergencies to suspend laws, move entire populations, arrest and detain citizens without a warrant, hold them without trial, can seize property, food supplies, transportation systems, and can suspend the constitution. Not only is it the most powerful entity in the United States, but it was not even created under constitutional law by Congress. It was a product of a presidential executive order. An executive order becomes law simply by the signature of the U.S. president. It does not have to even be approved by the representatives or senators in Congress. A state of national emergency could be a terrorist attack, natural disaster, or stock market crash, for example. Here are just a few executive orders associated with FEMA that would suspend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. These executive orders have been on record for nearly 30 years and could be enacted by the stroke of a president. 1095, 10.99.5, the right to seize all communications and media in the United States. 10.99.7, the right to seize all electric power, fuel, minerals, both public and private. 10.999, right to seize all means of transportation, including personal vehicles of any kind, total control of highways, seaports, waterways. 11,000, right to seize any and all American people and divide families into order to create workforces to be transferred to any place the government sees fit. 11,001, right to seize all health, education, and welfare facilities, both public and private. 11,002, right to force registration of all men and women and children in the United States. 11,003, right to seize all airspace, airports, aircraft. 11,004, right to seize all housing, financial authorities in order to establish a pretty location to designated areas and force abandonment of areas classified as unsafe. 11,005, right to seize all roadways. Railroads, inland waterways, storage facilities, both public and private. 11,921 authorizes the plan to establish government control of wages, salaries, credit, and the flow of money in the U.S. finance institutions. 1991, President George Bush Sr. praises the NWO. George Bush praises New World Order and the State of the Union message. What is at stake is more than a small country. It's a big idea, a New World Order. To achieve the universal aspirations of mankind is based on a shard shared principles and the rule of law, the illumination of a thousand points of lights, the wind of change are with us now. June 91, the Bilderberg Society in Baden, Baden, Germany. The world leaders are gathered for another closed-door meeting of Bilderberg Society in Baden, Baden, Germany. While that meeting, David Rockefeller said in a speech, we are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we'd been subjected to lights of publicly publicity during these years. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march towards the world government. The supernatural sovereignty of an intellectual elite and the World Bank is surely preferable to the national auto determination practice in past centuries. 20th and 9th of October, 91, David Funderbuck. David Funderbuck, former U.S. ambassador, Romania tells North Carolina audience, George Bush has been surrounding himself with people who have believed in one world government. They believe that the Soviet system and the American system are converging. 21st of May, 92, Henry Kissinger. In address to the Bilderberg Organization meeting in Evian, France, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger declares, today Americans would be outraged if UN troops entered LA to restore order tomorrow. They will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told there was an outside threat from beyond, whether real or pro proclamated. That threat threatened our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead with world leaders to deliver them from this evil. One thing that everyone 
man fears is the unknown, and presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by the world government. 20th of July, 92, the birth of the global nation. Strobe Tellett. Time magazine publishes The Birth of the Global Nation by Strobe Tellett, Rhodes Scholar, roommate of Bill Clinton at Oxford University, CFR Director and Trilateralist, and appointed by Deputy Secretary of State by President Clinton, in which he writes, Nationhood, as we know it, will be obsolete. All states will be recognised as a single, glo single global authority. All countries are basically social arrangements, no matter how permanent or even sacred they may be seen at any one time. In fact, if they are all artificial and temporary, Perhaps the national sovereignty wasn't such a great idea after all, but it has taken the events in our own Woodrow's a terrible century to clench the case for a world government. And in 93, second, second Parliament of World Religions. Second Parliament of World Religions is held in Chicago on the 103rd anniversary of the first. Like the first convention, this one would seek to join all religions of the world into one harmonious role. Now it wants to make them merge back into their original element. Traditional be beliefs of the monolith... The mono theistic religions such as Christianities are considered incompatible with individual enlightenment and must be drastically altered. CFR member and trilateralist Henry Kissinger writes in the LA Times concerning the NAFCA North American Free Trade Agreement, what Congress will have before it is not a conventional trade agreement but an architect of a new international system, a first step towards the new world order. 1994, Global Governance for the 21st Century in the Human Development Report published by the UN Development Program. There was a section called Global Governance for the 21st Century, page 88. The administrator for this program was appointed by Bill Clinton. His name is James Gustav Spitz. The opening sentence of the report said, Mankind's problems can no longer be solved by national government. What is needed is a world government. This is best achieved by strengthening the United Nations system. In May 94, Bill Clinton signs Presidential Decision Directive 25. He signs the Directive 25 and then declares it classified so the American people can't see what it says. The summary in PP, PDD 25 issued to the members of Congress tells us that it is authorized, authorizes the President to turn over control of the U.S. military to UN command. 23rd of September, 94, more people began to wake up. The globalists realized that as more and more people began to wake up to what's going on, they will only have a limited amount of time in which the implementation of their policy. Speaking at the United Nations Ambassadors Dinner, David Rockefeller remarks, this present window opportunity during which would truly be peaceful and independent world order might be built, would not be open too long. We are on the verge of a global transformation all we need is the right major crisis and the nations will accept the new world order. March 25, March 95, Global Taxes. UN delegates meet at a world summit for social development in Copenhagen. Then mark to discuss various methods for imposing global taxes on the people of the world. September 95, HARP. Popular Science magazine describes a top secret US Navy installation called HARP, High Frequency Active Rural Research Program in the state of Alaska. This project beams powerful radio energy into the Earth's upper atmosphere. One of the goals of the program is to develop the capacity of manipulating local weather using this technique developed by Bernard Eastland. This program has been underway since 1990. September 27, 1995, the State of the World Forum. The State of the World Forum took place on the fall of this year, sponsored by the Orbitroff Foundation, located at Presidio in San Francisco. Foundation President Jim Garrison chairs the meeting of who's who's from around the world, including Margaret Thatcher, Morris Strong, George Bush, Mikhail Gorbachev, and others. Conversation centers around the oneness of mankind and the coming global government. However, the term global governance is now used in place of the new world order, since the latter has been political, a political liability, being a light, lightning rod for opponents of global governments. 1996, Our Global Neighbourhood. In United Nations, 420-page report, Our Global Neighbourhood is published. It outlines a plan for a global governance, calling for international conference on the global governance in 1998 for the purpose of submitting to the world the necessary treaties and agreements for ratification by the year 2000. 2003, state emergency. The world is on the verge of another global war, state, state emergency, looked for by the one of the world leaders to impose martial law and universal microchip under the skin. But with God's help, they will not have the last word. So I dare say we're <laughs> that state of emergency is happening now. Don't know if you're still with me, but if you're still with me, I appreciate this. I'm not sure if I'll do this on a live stream or upload it. I do have a lot of stuff that I have been recording here and there. I just haven't had time to edit. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.